I'm not saying that what you're putting inside your mouth is bad, because I don't know what you're putting. You could be putting your foot in your mouth, which I do frequently enough, which would explain the fungal infections. You probably eat things and you don't think about what you're eating. Could actually be hurting you. But it tastes so good. Sure, it might taste good, but what if it's destroying your liver? Or some other part of your body? What if it's clogging up your arteries? Would you want to live as long as you possibly could? I don't think anybody, unless they were feeling suicidal, would say anything other than, yeah, I'd want to live as long as I possibly could. Well, part of it is based on what you eat. You know, input, output. You need to have your body generate energy, so it needs to get energy from somewhere else. Food and, and beverages. The problem is, a lot of the stuff that you, you might be eating is generally killing you. Slowly. It doesn't feel like it's killing you. In fact, it may feel great! When in a matter of fact, uh, it isn't that great for your body. Uh, your body can't tell you that it doesn't appreciate it, at least in a certain amount of words. Now, over time, you start to you know, find yourself in, in problematic situations where your health isn't as good as it was when you were younger, and uh, you could do something to change it. Uh, years ago, I cut off high fructose corn syrup and trans fats and artificial sweeteners. They're out. Haven't had them for a decade, or if I have, they've been very minimal, and I didn't mean to ingest them. Uh, I've generally avoiding, uh, I have generally avoided uh, food products uh, in exchange for food, and this is important because there's a lot of geeky snacks out there, or snacks that are, are highly regarded as, hey, we, we cater to geeks. Uh, there are healthy alternatives to those geeky snacks, and I'm not trying to slam any of the big companies, they have a right to make money and you have a right to actually uh, you know, purchase these products, but Mountain Dew is a product that I know many of you love. Uh, I know even Diana, my wife, uh, sucks it down two liters at a time. She actually double fists it. <laughs> She's not that bad. Uh, it's not really good for you, and I think you all knew that it, it wasn't good for you, even though a lot of geeks seem to like it for one reason or another. Uh, and that's okay if that's the way you want to go. Just understand that uh, could give you an increase of energy, uh, absolutely. But uh, it uh, could also help induce insomnia or daytime drowsiness. You take in uh, too much sugar, especially high fructose corn syrup. That's the same thing. No, it's not. Your liver doesn't think it's the same thing. Your body knows different. It breaks it down differently. Yes, you know, the building blocks of life, you know, it needs to turn everything into something else. But the quality of the ingredients you give uh, your body may very well dictate what your body is able to do. Uh, and there are healthy alternatives. You want something sweet? Uh, try uh, some kind of juice that's not packed with sugar. A natural juice, or maybe juice stuff on your own. Take a real fruit, put it in a juicer, juice it. Make a, make a smoothie out of it. A, I would not recommend going with a diet drink, if only because the artificial sweeteners. Now think about this, guys. Chris, why are you talking about this? This is science, folks! Do you really think your body, fully organic, understands what to do with plastic? Do, do you really? Because that's what you might be eating in the form of certain types of trans fats. Uh, it's plastic. It's not good for you. you. You could set out a stick of margarine on the windowsill, a thousand years later, be in the same condition as it was the day you set it out there. You really want to eat that? Now, nah, that drink that I was talking about doesn't have trans fats. But it's it certainly modified uh, in, in, in such a way that it may not be good for you. Now, this is going to uh, drive a, a striking blow uh, to uh, my wife, Diana, again, because the number two suggestion uh, for an alternative is for Cheetos. She's a fan of Cheetos. But here's the thing. Uh, contains no less than four food dyes. How do you think that orange, orange, do you think that's a natural glow? Red. The red, do you think that's a natural <laughs> red? It's not natural. Cheetos cannot be found in nature. If it can't be found in nature, probably not going to be good for your body. Your body wasn't built for dealing with anything other than what it could naturally deal with. Ugh, think about this, folks. I you know, it's easy. I'll just grab this soda here and these snacks here and this pizza here. Pizza? Oh man. Pizza's another suggestion. It's not all bad, though. I mean... The toppings. Think about the toppings on top of the pizza. You know, peppers, uh, some types of meats. Uh, you know, uh, you, you've got uh, cheese. 
you know, think about having those type of ingredients mixed together in a different way uh, without having to worry about, uh, you know, low quality ingredients that you might find in the freezer section in your grocery store. Or even, you know, going out to eat, uh, dining out, uh, they're probably not using supremely amazing ingredients. They're cutting costs. And what they're cutting is your life. Oh, I'm saving so much money by buying this stuff because it's so cheap and it tastes so good. Ask yourself, with your brain, while you currently have it functioning, uh, what's your body say about all this stuff that isn't really natural? Uh, think about it. Being a geek. Bacon? He put bacon down here? Oh, yeah. It's got a lot of sodium, nitrates, and fat. Okay, now, Matt, you're hurting me. He's now taking away pizza and bacon. And bacon's a pretty geeky treat. I think For some reason, geeks like bacon. Uh, but an alternative, going with uh, turkey bacon, uh, vegetarian bacon, instead of traditional pork. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a big deal. Another suggestion that you strike off your list, and he gives an alternative, red vines. Uh, now, the reason why Matt's brought all this stuff up, and he, he's got an alternative, by the way, to red vines. Uh, that, uh, let's see here, hang on. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Sugar-free red vines don't contain aspartame or sucralose, but maltitol. You have too much maltitol, it's, um, it's like a laxative effect. Don't ask me how I know. I didn't have to do the research. It did it to me. Uh, Matt has been trying to lose weight, and I applaud him for it, or I should say lose fat, uh, and I've had to do that at times in my life, and I've had to take a, a scientific approach to things and realize that uh, you know the quality of ingredients that I bring into my body may very well dictate the quality of life that I have. Uh, you may have suffered from certain ailments, not realizing what it was that was causing you harm. Could very well have been the things that you were eating and drinking. Um, you know, these are snacks that, you know, pretty easy. You pick it up, eat it, whatever, and then uh, with... <sighs> Diana, hand me that box. You picked these I out. did not pick these out. Yes, you did. I did not pick these out. Because I could eat them if I wanted to because there's no trans fats and no high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> I'm a bad example. Just saying. Keep that in mind. Uh, we want you to be healthy geeks so that you can compute more and stay away from the hospitals and the doctors and be healthy. Think about, you, you think about, you know, t tweaking your hardware. Dude, this is your most important piece of hardware. Think about what it is going to need to run optimally. Because if you don't have this, you're never going to have this.